so cool. So this is Taco Tuesday Girl. Hey, I know her. Yeah. Um. This is not boring. Um. I agree with that. Um. My long form unedited conversation. I love it. Hello, welcome back to IC. Uh, that's a little abbreviation that we've come up with. Yeah. A little acronym for we, the show. Yeah. Yeah. We had a whole research team come up with that one. Yes. Actually. Yeah. And I'm glad that we landed on IC. IC. Um, yeah. Stands for Insanely Chill. So welcome back. That's this show. And uh, good to have you here. Um, today on the show, we have a guest. His name, Jeff Wittick. Uh, now, Jeff and I have have a little history together. You might know of it. You might not. Kind of irrelevant. I saw him do a half Ironman recently. And, uh, you know, for me, when I see that sort of shit, I'm like, I immediately, I'm like, holy, f another, like, nobody in this world is into this shit. I kind of feel like I'm isolated off by myself, you know? Um... And so when I saw that, I was super jazzed, let's say. And I hit him up right away, and I was like, you did an, you did an Iron Man? He said he did an Iron Man. He's actually a half Iron Man. I'm going to give him a little shit for that. Um, and so I saw that, and I was, I was very jazzed to hit him up. I was like, dude, what's up, man? What are you, you running? You swimming? You biking? What's your favorite thing about running? Just, you swim before you bike, or what's your nutrition? Just like, you know, immediately I just get into it because I'm stoked. And I was like, ah, hold on, halt. We got to go on a run together. That should be the first thing, you know? I want to start doing that more. I want to start reaching out to people. When I learn that they're into this sort of thing, reach out, let's go for a run. Let's catch up. And uh, which we haven't done in like five years or something. I, I've seen him at like events and stuff briefly. We'll be like, hey, what's up? But I haven't really caught up. So we did that. We went on a long run together. Um, I smoked his ass straight up and I'm going to give him some some shit for that too. Um and it was great. We caught up and stuff and and then I asked him you want to come on the pod and talk about, you know, your training and your goals and whatnot and he was down. So um you know, if you don't know if you don't know Jeff, look look him up. I mean, I'm, I don't need to go into all the, you know, stuff about the vlog squad and not, you know, whatever. Just go look him up. Jeff FM is his podcast, really really funny. Uh, he's doing some great stuff. He's a really funny dude. So happy to have him on the show today. And, uh, I think it's going to be a good one. So stay tuned. Uh, it's coming right up, like right now. I'm just want to plug real quick. The, in the insanely chill socials. Yes. Uh, insanely chill pod on Instagram. Yep. Instagram and TikTok and in TikTok insanely chill pod. We'll put a little banner maybe yep. under Cody. Don't have a Twitter uh, yet because we're locked out of it. Yeah. We want to kind of use the same Twitter that I made six, seven years ago, whatever that was, but it's, we're locked out. I don't have the password. Yeah. Didn't maybe, save that one for maybe, some reason. Uh, maybe people could comment what they think the password would be <laughs> for its Twitter so we can, like, just <laughs> use, we can brainstorm it together. It's a great, great idea. Yeah. And we'll just brute force it. Yeah. Just by trying all the things that people, and, like, if we put our heads together, I think we'll get it. There, there's only so many combinations of letters and, and numbers. We've guessed, we've guessed a lot of things. Yeah. We've guessed I see. I see. I see. I see one. password. <laughs> I see. Pa I see UP. I see UP. I see uh, 69. I see. Insanely chill pod three. I don't know why. I yeah. Just tried that one. It was random. That was after we tried I see pod one and two. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Beanie baby. I tried that. Beanie baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. And then every time we go through like five or ten, it locks us out for another like week. Yeah. And we can't try anymore. So yep. we're finally past that little time period. So now we want to try some of your suggestions. So let me know what you think the password is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we'll get it. I, I really think that eventually we'll get this. It. I mean, if enough people help out, yeah, we can do this as a community. Yes, an I IC agree. community. You just I have, opened I, up so many cocaine jokes. <laughs> yeah. Right in. No, you just did by <laughs> saying that. <laughs> you did. I think they were already thinking it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, I I am pretty sure I used a password generator for oh. that password, so I'm pretty sure it's like a random string oh, no. of Y of star letters and numbers and P. yes, and probably twelve <laughs> long. But yeah. don't worry about that. Give me your suggestions, and uh, we'll try some of them. All right. Uh, okay, it's been five minutes now. You're probably saying, "Where's Jeff?" You're probably saying, 
my name Jeff <laughs> at this point. <sighs> so let's get into it. Thanks for watching. Insanely chill as always, and uh, good to see you. Thank you for the gift. Of course. I appreciate it, what we got here. I told you the other day that I was gonna give you the deodorant, but I forgot, because I was smoked. I ran with him, this guy's fast. Yeah. Super fast. Yeah, yeah. you said he could keep up with you now though, right? Oh, well, I could keep up with him now, but the other day I had a problem going on with my intestines or something, uh, the cap's on, so you pretty much just, that was a, was fake, like that was like a fake reaction. It smells like plastic. You just lied. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Cody's thinking of you. Burnt rubber. Thank you, I appreciate it, but, but twist it a little on the bottom. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was also a fake reaction. But no, that smells really good. Thank you. That smells really good. I appreciate it. Oh, wait, the cap is still on it. Hold on. No, that smells good. I just put deodorant on, but you know what? I'm going to double it up. Okay. All right. What deodorant are you using currently? Uh, Old Spice. Come on. <laughs> no, it's all You're good. beefing with them, right? Yeah, but I understand that, you know, throughout life, you figure it out. You know, you make mistakes, and then that's what life's all about. You get on the right track. So now I'm here to help you use the proper... Well, here's the thing is, like, growing up, I learned I have really, like, sensitive skin because mm -hmm. I would use deodorants, and I would break out in a crazy rash. It's perfect for you, then. This one? Yeah. Because it's natural, right? Mm -hmm. It's all natural. None of the shit. Because I think it was from the aluminum and, like, whatever bullshit they put in Yeah, there. antiperspirants, they will give you cancer. That was cancer that you were getting early on. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. So you had cancer. a mild form of cancer wow. coming on early, okay. but we stopped it right now. We did. Mm -hmm. Right now. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And what else do we have? A couple more. There's a candle. We got texture spray. This yeah. is great because I just ran out of hair shit, too. And we got Jeff's Barbershop clay pomade. Thank you. I man. figure, you know, our last experience together where I did your hair didn't go well, so... What do you mean? The, what? Least, <laughs> I, the least I could do. Should what we happens? get right into that? So long ago. <laughs> that, was, that was my first cancellation. And I deserved it big time. Well, I thought it was funny because we went we went for a run together. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we're gonna have the exact same conversation that we did. It's fine when I, we had that run. We're just gonna have it on. Yeah, record. we pretty much did a podcast the other day because I lost my AirPods. So I usually don't run with people. I'll just put on the AirPods. But if I do run with people, sometimes I'll talk. But I don't want to put that on you to have to talk to me for like an hour and a half. So long. I thought that's how it went though. When you go on a run with someone, you like catch up and you talk. That's the point. It's like it makes the time go by fast. It depends. But you were expecting to come, and we're both just run beside each other with the ear AirPods in. Yeah, yeah. I listen to my music. You listen to yours, and maybe occasionally we shout at each other or something. But, um, I mean, yeah. Either way, it works. I I enjoyed it. It was like we pretty much did a podcast while we were running, so that was cool. It was great. Mm -hmm. was I really enjoyed it. I'm proud of you, man. I'm excited to have you as a friend again, like somebody that does what I do, but also Thanks. you have the same hobbies. We're like influencer, um, like crossover. It's, instead of influencer boxers, we're influencer triathletes. And we're the only. Genre. We're it feels like we're the only, the only ones right now. There are other people that do it, but it's like their, it's like their job. Yeah, they're like they're pro triathletes, or it's like their main thing. But I feel like for us, it's like a passion. Yeah, well, running is like a common hobby. Like, I walked on and just did a marathon like out of nowhere in the past, and that was fine. Like people do that, and that's normal. But to do a triathlon, you gotta have a bike, you gotta have all this stuff, you gotta know how to swim. That's one thing that I didn't really know how to do at first. But um, yeah, like anybody can run, but this is like a weird hobby. You gotta have a lot of money to buy the bike and stuff like that. So yeah, it's very rare that you'll see somebody do it. I had a video I wanted to send you that I saw last night. It was about these influencer girls that cheated in a half marathon. I think you'd like it. I'm gonna send it to yeah, you guys. Can, can we you, watch can you send it? send that? Yeah, I'll send it over. No way. Like what, pretended, just pretended to do it? So they did half of it, and then they posted about it. They just like did half, and then they cut the course, and they like drove to the other side. <laughs> no and they posted way. about it that they had no training. <laughs> did you get it already? I'm, I may have. Someone made a video about it. As they approach the 11-mile split, though, no chip timer seems to go off. But perhaps no some way. Sort of weird error on the race organizer. Yeah, part. so their but splits come through the were so crazy. They ran the first one. It took them like an hour and a half, and then the second half of the race, they did it at, like, the the marathon champion. What's his name? Kachobi. Yeah. They ran it at his pace. <laughs> <laughs> For the last six miles, they ran four-minute miles the whole way. 
and they didn't think anyone was going to like look into this? No, well, I mean, I guess it was their first time, and then they posted about it on Instagram. They were like, we did this with no training, we got to raise money for charity, and we did it in this great time. And I kind of felt like it was like my caption that I did for my, because I did the Iron Man with like no training, and I was yeah. like bragging, I'm like, look, I did this shit with no training. But at least I didn't cheat, you know? Yeah, yeah. You Doing did. this, you're only cheating yourself. And they, they did it so stupid to like do it like four minute miles. They didn't even plan it. Like at least hop on the back of a bike or like a scooter or <laughs> yeah, something. You're you know, cheat, cheat smart. Yeah, exactly. But that's th- in that's absurd and also kind of falls in line with something that I like, uncovered yesterday. There's like this whole subreddit called Jim Snark. Like as I post more, as I get more into Cody trains and posting on Instagram and all this stuff, I'm falling more in line with like people that, you know, like fit fluencers, basically like people whose like primary thing it is like post their workouts and their meals and all this stuff. Right. There's a lot of people that do that. And so this subreddit kind of calls some of them out because a lot of them are are really fake. And someone posted my account on this and was like, oh, you should check them out. Like it seems like an honest depiction of what it's like to train. Whereas a lot of these people, like, they'll, they'll A, like, they have horrible, like, you know, relationships with food and whatnot. But also, they'll sell their coaching services, but they have someone on the side ghost coaching those people. So you were put on this, uh, they put you up there saying that you were a fraud? No, no, no. Somebody posted this and was like, hey, no snark. Has anyone seen his new YouTube channel? Like, I think it's like a perfect mix of entertaining and inspiring, which I thought was very nice. Yeah. So then I was like clicking around in this subreddit, like, what the fuck is Jim Snark? What is this? Okay. And like learning about this whole world of people whose job it is, is to be like, look how jacked I am. Let me sell you my services and I'll coach you and you can be as jacked. But then they don't, they don't actually coach them. They have someone on the side that they pay way less than their charge. So it's like drop shipping. To, yes. But of coaching. Okay. It's yeah. fucking crazy, right? Yeah, it's crazy. I guess it's kind of like, I don't know. I, I don't, I've i never had a coach for any of this stuff, so I would be okay with that, you know? Even if I was just getting a course. Yeah. But if I was paying yeah. for it, I would be like, all right, whatever, who gives a fuck? But I guess the point of a coach is to have somebody that's actually paying attention to what you're doing and knows what they're talking about, because otherwise just look it up on an app or something. Yeah, like the guy who, who gives me my workouts, he's like, he's like a you know, super accomplished triathlete, like has done every single Ironman. He won the Malibu triathlon. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. Like Damn. super fast. And so like when he gives me advice, I'm like, I listen because I'm like, oh, this guy yeah. knows what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. If it was, if I found out it was coming from someone else on the side, you'd be pissed off. I'd be kind of pissed. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like if it was just like he was using chat GPT or something to, <laughs> to coach me through Ironman. Yeah. And, I mean, it's the same vein as these girls that, fake it because they're probably like look how i don't know they're probably fit influencers too right yeah what well, these guys that are just uh reselling this these courses to make a profit i mean they're hustling there's a lot worse things you could do online but that's funny that would be funny to get scammed by a coach yeah by a scammer like that yeah um i had some other shit that i wanted to talk to you about but first can you help me with my uh watch here my garmin watch sure what do you need I can't get it out of kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> I keep Looks running. like you got to learn metrics now, dude. Yeah? It's not that hard, man. I can't figure I this shit out. I'm so far behind, but this thing got me out of a jam yesterday. I was at the gym. This is a sick one. Remember that ex-girlfriend I told you about yeah. on the run? Yeah. So I bumped into her in the gym yesterday, and she was like, are you nervous? Because I hadn't seen her in a couple months. And when I work out, like right now I'm hopped up because I just ran. Yeah. So she was like, are you nervous? And I was like. Nervous for what? I'm like, no, I'm not fucking nervous to talk to you. You know, because I haven't seen her in like three months. So I I look at my heart rate on the watch and it's at like 70. So I'm like, I'm pretty chill right now. So I show her the watch. I'm like, look, I'm not fucking nervous. My veins are cold as ice right now. So I put the watch on her and her heart rate was at like 90. So I was like, you're fucking nervous. You're projecting at me right now. So this watch got me out of a jam. That's sick. You're, you're at ever 70 in a situation. Huh? You're at 70 kilometers. I was at rate? 70 beats per minute, my heart rate. Yeah. So I showed her my actual heart rate. It was like I was on a lie detector test right there at the moment. <laughs> yeah, Wait, right. 70 beats per minute, but what is it in metric? Yeah, what That's is that metric? That's imperial, isn't it? No, I don't think it makes it. A... How many metric beats was it per minute? <laughs> I don't think that... The, 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 70 <laughs> metric How many metric minutes do you yeah, have your beats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, we're going to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. 
With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Uh, you've got New Year's goals, and HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh's Festival Fair collection features limited time recipes made with seasonal produce and premium proteins. Get out of the post holiday slump with these elevated winter classics. And you already know what my favorite is. I don't even I don't even have to say it anymore. You're probably saying it right now. If you're watching that side, you're probably you're probably murmuring to yourself. It's a beep bop. Say it. Say the beep bop. It is a beep bop. But there's tons of other ones. I literally we eat this all the time and it honestly still surprises me how how far they stretch the ingredients they give you in terms of flavor. It's incredible. Every recipe feels like I can I didn't even know you could use that part of the lemon, you know? And it just tastes, everything tastes like restaurant quality. It's fucking awesome. Skip the snowy schlep to the grocery store and stock up on snacks, sides, desserts, and more at HelloFresh Market. Simply add these staples and sweets to your weekly order, and they'll arrive to your doorstep along with your meals. That's cool. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Chill21 and use code Chill21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Chill21 and use code Chill21 for 21 free meals (laughs) plus free shipping. That's a lot of free meals. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. But you've been crushing it, dude. I, I I look at your Strava, and I get inspired, but I also get like a little pissed off. Like I looked this morning to see what you were doing, see where you're up to. Yeah, you've been giving me kudos on every single workout. I know, which is really encouraging. Yeah, well, you didn't accept me for months, so I'm excited to see what you're up to. You say that, but it's not true. Maybe. I went to my following request, and you were the first one. I redid it, so you saw. <laughs> okay, yeah, I figured sure, you had a okay, bunch. sure. But um, I look at your runs, and I'm like, shit, I got to get out there and, and get a workout in. And I knew we were doing this today, so I was like, all right, let me get a workout in before so I get like a one-up on him, you know? Yeah. And then I look, and you had run twice in the in I the ran time. and I swam. You ran and you swam, but you ran yesterday. Yeah. And your thing is on Australian time. Yeah, so, I, I can't change it. It's Venice, but Venice, Australia. <laughs> no, I know. Really? Why does it? Yeah, so and I've funny. tried to change it, but it won't. It won't do it. It's like a Strava bug. But for me, looking at that, I'm like, okay, let me see what he did today. But you already ran today, but then you ran tomorrow as well. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck, man, this guy had. <laughs> How was he running in the future as well? Yeah, it's just it, crushing my confidence. <laughs> I wish I never added you as a friend on Strava because now I'm just getting just shitted on nonstop. I mean, you added me like right as my training got super intense. Like the weekend was crazy. Like the, you know, I did like a three and a half hour bike to Malibu mm-hmm. and I back know. and ran and like just, it was just like fucking intense. But it's like the Ironman is 16 weeks away. Damn. And it's a, it's a full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting bullied into doing a a full Ironman. This is I, I deserve it though. I put out that I did a half Ironman with no training, and the way I worded it, it came off like I was trying to trying to frame it as if I did a full Ironman, but I didn't. That was the editor who said like people don't care about this shit. They're not gonna know the difference if it was like a seventy point three or full, full Ironman. So I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, just run it. I don't give a shit. And I got so much shit talked to me in those comments. I thought like people are gonna be proud of me no matter what. You know, I, I completed it. It was tough. I didn't know how to swim at all. I was backstroking in the swim and I just got crushed for it. Even Casey Neistat, I hit him up yesterday because I'm like, why haven't you been active on Strava? And, <laughs> and you're <laughs> Out of nowhere. I haven't talked to him in six months. I'm like, like, well, I haven't even been active on Strava. You're really on this about him buying his Strava followers. Yeah. (laughs) He's got, Casey has 50,000 Strava followers. He's like a Strava influencer. I mean, that makes sense. It's Casey Neistat. But he's done, he's logged zero miles in the past, (laughs) like, six months. Big conspiracy going on with that. So (laughs) yesterday, I just felt the need. Between us, yeah, between the two uh, crossover triathletes, the only ones that exist on the planet right now. It's a big controversy. So I hit him up, <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I stopped logging it because of stalkers. People started showing up where I was running. And I was like, all right, that makes sense. And then we started talking about you and how, you know, you're training for the Iron Man, and you're going to get the Iron Man tattoo after. I don't know how it came up. might have just been me just rambling to him. 
And then I was saying how I'm going to get half the Iron Man tattoo because I did only the half. And he was like, the half isn't half as hard as the full. It's about 10% as hard because, wow. you know, it, and he kind of shitted on me, but he was like, just get the eye if you're going to do it. <laughs> Don't even do, do half. So your half is nothing. I've just been getting cyber bullied for this half Iron Man. But whatever. I well, don't that's why. Fuck. That's why it. It like. <laughs> that's why it probably pissed. It pissed me off, but also a lot of the other people watching it. Yeah. Because you kept saying Iron Man, Iron Man, and I'm in the middle of like training my ass off and like spending it's hours the, it's, every day. It's and in like, the same you family. Fucker. It's put on by the same event, the same brand. No, it is. Whatever. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Sue me. I did a fucking half. But you Iron train. Man. You didn't even train. <laughs> you spent. It was two weeks, and then you just hopped in. You know, you just yeah, bro, that's yeah, how that's I hard. do it. I don't eat properly. <laughs> I do, eat but nothing do you think but you candy. Do it for I do that for a full. Yeah, you think you could? What in yeah. two weeks? Uh, not in two weeks. No, 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 no. I take that back. No, I mean, if I maybe if I had like, I just got to get the swimming down. If I learned how to swim properly and I could do the because it's a three mile swim, right? Yeah, well, two two point four, I think. Okay. See, there I go you again. You might be able to do it, honestly. Just rounding up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking three. <laughs> I think I could, but then again, like I said about the marathons, like, I just thought people walk on, you see old ladies doing it and stuff, and, you know, it's just like, all right, this is possible for people to do. But when you get to that full Ironman length, it's like even elite athletes sometimes don't finish, Yeah, you know? Like, you never know what could happen. You could break your ankle. You could... Shit your pants, you know? Yeah, it's like a, a lot flat about... tire on the bike. It's a lot about uh, nutrition, too. Like, you have to really focus on, like, what you're eating, how often you're eating, just to make sure that your stomach doesn't, like, get queasy or whatever. Because, yeah, you can end up like shitting yourself. Like, the other day yourself. with me. Yeah. You know? Like, that fucks you up, you know? I had a bunch of Swedish fish the night before, and... <laughs> Did you? <laughs> My diet is terrible. Is it really? I feel like you, like, care about no, your... No, dude, no, that's... How that's... are you so jacked, then? I'm not. It's all fake. It's all just, like... <laughs> You know, I just get good angles. I get the right angles on my photos and stuff. I'm like, I'm fit. Like, I could push it. But when it comes down to that level, if I want to get to that level, I need to get a coach. Maybe I'll get one of these scam coaches, you know, one of these people. You that, should. You should get a ghost coach. Even that I'll would coach be better. You. Yeah. I'll coach you. Just give me give your you a program. Plan. <laughs> exactly. And I'd be happy with yeah. that. See? I'll, there's a low, low price of like $2,000 a month. And what are you paying? What am I paying? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's not no, not let's relevant. Go. What are you paying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to know what I'm paying for my coach? Yeah. I think it, he just increased it like literally two days ago. But before that, I think it was two hundred a month. Now it's four hundred a month. Damn. Ooh. What did he? Why did he Double increase it? it? What does he see? Probably because he he's the ad he hired a minute? ghost coach. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he you saw were training for a half Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, maybe he saw. Yeah, Man. exactly. He saw the channel and he was like, "Okay, he hundred thousand, yeah. huh? <laughs> this guy's monetizing what I'm giving him. <laughs> you got sponsors <laughs> on there. Watch sponsors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get a little this. piece of that. <laughs> Makes sense. Whoop. By the way. Whoop. That's right. Hoop. If you were it's coach, actually pronounced it's hoop. 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 Yeah. I'll get a coach and I'll step it up so I could hang with you in these workouts. I saw your swim today. Very impressive. Thanks, man. That's what I was going to say is, yeah, when I started training, I realized like it probably wouldn't take that long to like get to the point where I could like struggle through the whole thing. But I would be like, you know, I would probably finish near the cutoff time or whatever. I think like the reason why I'm training so hard is because I'd like to try and like get a good time. Yeah. On my first one. What's the cutoff in the full? I think the cutoff is like 16, 17 hours, something like that. But I mean, I I'm, I would like to do like 12 if I can. Yeah. Damn. What's the or average, lower than 12. Like for people completing it? Is it 12? Probably like 14, 15. Oh, okay. Well, and this yeah. is the last one you're doing with your dad's doing, right? Yeah. So are you going to try and are you going to finish above him, do you think? Or are you going to try? I'm going to try and smoke the shit out of him. <laughs> cool. What's That's his shit. average time? <laughs> I mean,. I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, he did the one with my sister last year. I forget what his time was. That'd be terrible if you worked that hard for 16 hours. It's dark out, you know, like you feel horrible. And then they're just like, uh, oh, you know, you see the finish line and they're like, <laughs> yeah, and they're like deflating it. <laughs> hey, yeah, you're done. <laughs> Maybe next year. Sorry. Yeah, you're coming in 16, like, oh, one. You see everybody with their medals. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get a medal? Do I get a medal? No. Do I get like one of those like emergency blankets? 
just ran out. That's, just pack those in the truck. You see, that's the difference with like one of these marathons that you just walk on and the Ironman. Like, I feel like they would give you the medal anyway with a, a marathon. But with the Ironman, these people are no bullshit people. Like when I was swimming, I thought I could just backstroke and just doggy paddle if I needed to. People are elbowing me saying, get the fuck out of the way and like cursing me out. So these people, you know. They care. It's their life. Yeah. So, yeah, they will not give you that medal, and they'll be like, do better next time, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Cody, my friend, the other Cody that I, my other Cody friend, he's the one who got me into doing this stuff, and his first Ironman, he got disqualified because Why? he had his phone on him, and he was doing, like, Instagram stories. <laughs> <while> he, <laughs> and they were like, nope, you're done. They put him in a penalty box. Did you, what? Did you ever see those? No. They have these yellow penalty boxes, like hockey, but I don't... I thought it was just for the pros. I've seen that for the pros, like, when they draft and shit, they get... Oh, is that what Because it for? actually matters at that point, because it's, like, they're all, like, neck and neck. Oh, okay. So but maybe so, but he was. got put in there? He got put in the penalty box. But I don't get why he would even sit in there. You're a grown man. Just get the fuck out of there. <laughs> just go home. You know? I'm not letting no other adults put me in a penalty box. I'm out. I'm fucking <laughs> so done. So I'm not standing in this the... yellow square... For a little bit, yeah, you got to stand right there. <laughs> right this and way, I can't sir. move. No, nope. <laughs> and you're okay, not gonna do anything fuck. if I get out. No, but you have to stand there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You sit and think okay. about what you did. Okay, <sighs> so he got disqualified because he had his phone out, and then he he still had to do the second half of the race because he was like halfway into the race when he got disqualified. So that will really fuck your head up. If something like that happens, that could ruin your race for you. It happened to me. I went off course on the run, and. Yeah, again, it's only a half, so who gives a fuck? Yeah, who but cares? I went off course, and now I'm completely smoked. I didn't know what it's like to go from cycling for 56 miles and then going into a run. Your legs are shot yeah. completely. So I start running. I'm like a 90-year-old man. Like just My form is terrible. My knees hurt so bad. And I go down the course, and there's all these weird cones and stuff. My head's all fucked up. So I go the wrong way on this path, and I run for about two miles. I come back, and this woman is like, you went the wrong way. You like that doesn't count everything you just did. And I'm like, why the fuck didn't you tell me? You know? Yeah. But they're all volunteers. And I didn't say why the fuck, you know, like I didn't curse at her, but she was, you know, probably should have had just read the room a little bit. You know, all these people you're talking to are extremely spent, have been pushing it for six hours already. Yeah, yeah. And now you're gonna yell at them like yeah, that yeah. over a wrong turn. Yeah, yeah. So thank God she let me count what I just did, because the tracker will will count it. But I had to run that two miles, and then I came back to her, and I was like, can we count that? And she was like, yeah, you're good. Just don't do it again. And I was like, thank God, because that would have ruined my whole momentum. Wait, but just, then so, but then you still had to run an extra two miles, right, to the finish? No, no, she let me count that. She was like, just do the, do the course the wrong way that you did it, and we'll count that. Oh, I see. But that could have ruined me. If I ran that two miles and she didn't count it, that would have been like, yeah, yeah. all right, fuck it. I'm just going to go home. Hey, we'd like to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Babbel. One of the most exciting things about a new year is that you have no idea what adventures are in store for you. From new travel experiences to new jobs or picking up new skills, there's no better way to prepare for 2023 than by learning a new language with Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you can feel confident uh, no matter where the new year takes you. I've always wished I could speak another language. I have a Portuguese pen pal, and I have no idea what they're writing to me. <laughs> but they continue to do it, and I continue to write back, and I have no idea what we're saying. It's a really confusing relationship. I don't even know if they're real. Could be chat GPT on the other side. Not really sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective, and with Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages. Uh, there are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So, if that sounds interestan interestanto, <laughs> so if that sounds interesting to you, 
Uh, right now, you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash insane. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash insane for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Dude, yeah. like the in the ultra marathon that I did, they like didn't label the trails well enough. And like all the people at the front ended up taking a wrong turn and they they did like an extra 15K or something. Which like... In an ultra marathon, it's like by the time you're finished, you're like running on 1%. You have no gas left in the tank. So that, like, every kilometer fucking matters so much. Yeah. Because you're about to pass out. So all of them were furious. So they didn't get that 15 No, it didn't count. Damn. It, it was like they had to go out and then come back and then go to on the right path. So all of them did, like, an extra, like, se- they did, like, 75K or something. Yeah. Damn, that's where that extreme mental toughness comes in. Like, I don't... I've been through some tough shit, but I don't know if I if I have that. Like after you get discouraged that bad, it's easy to take that excuse that your brain is giving you. Like, oh well, fuck it. This shit they fucked you over, so fuck this race. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's what I would do. I would be like, yeah, fuck these people. It's their fault. I'm out of here. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but that's just when you're at that moment, that breaking point, where your yeah. mind starts telling you, like, you know, uh, your legs are hurt. This is gonna be bad for the rest of your life or something. You're gonna have those voices in your head. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think. That's why training is so good because it like teaches you that Mm -hmm. it teaches you not to like act or just like you know play victim yeah it's like no i'm just i i'm here i showed up i gotta get this done yeah see i wouldn't know that because yeah you should try you should try training yeah (laughs) i've got a i've got i just listen to david goggins podcast and shit you know but that's i'm reading his book right now are you yeah see he has the mental toughness that you could just like that shit will happen to him and he'll just be like, oh, fuck it. Stay hard. I'm going to yeah. keep running. You know? Yeah. Fuck that 15K. Don't count it. Yeah, don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah. He's a nut job, though. I don't think we could hang out with him and, you know. I, I His whole thing is like, I'm just like you guys. But I do think there's something a little warped about his brain that, you know, 100%. gives him a little bit more of an elevated ability to, like, just, I don't know, like, endure pain. Cause like even even like reading about his childhood, his childhood is so fucked up. He got like beaten by his dad for the first like ten years of his life, just like mercilessly. Yeah. So it feels like that would kind of like change your brain chemistry in a way. Oh yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. No, that guy is is he's a different breed. You know, there are people out there that I just like. I don't get it. I don't get how they do it. Um. So you're gonna do a full though. Yeah, I guess I have to at this point. You know, <laughs> doesn't sound like you really want to. <laughs> no, you I have don't. To. I don't want you to. You have to. I need someone to train with. And I said when I did the half, I was like, I hope I don't get hooked on this shit. I hope I don't want to do a full. And then, you know, I'm, I'm buying these outfits, these cycling outfits with the padding <laughs> on your ass and, you know, walking around with those fucking shoes on and stuff. I just, I was scared of how I would end up, you know, like a, just an old white man in these cycling outfits, you know, competing in these things. My, I walk around, my knees will be clicking and stuff, like my ankles popping. I don't want to be that. But and I, you're walking on your, like... But I'm being with- cyber-bullied into doing it now, you know? <laughs> like, I, I got my comments are all saying, do a half. I went to I went back to Staten Island, my hometown, and I go into a pizzeria where I always pop in there when I go back to my hometown. And this kid I saw last time I went there, he was like, yo, Jeff, I started working here because of you. Like, you inspired me, whatever. Like, I saw you come in here. And then I go in this time, and he's like, he's like, yo, Jeff, uh, are you going to get half of the Iron Man tattoo because you only did half? <laughs> <laughs> and I was, like, just fucking pissed off, you know? Like, he got me good. And this is in real life. It's not even just, like, the trolls anymore. Like, this is people calling me out in real life now. Like, what the fuck? I did a fucking seven hour, extremely hard thing, and people are just giving me shit for it. So, yeah, I'm going to do it. Who's this? This is me. <laughs> this, is oh this is what you were just describing. <laughs> oh, I didn't oh even recognize God. you. That was me on, on Damn. Sunday. Shades. Pretty right, so. sick, right? Yeah. Pretty fire. Wow, look at that. Dude, it, oh, do you have the straw coming out of the. Is this connected to the. Oh, yeah. That's a little water bottle right there. <laughs> An arrow water bottle. I mean, you can, yeah. No, but so to save time, I mean, they'll see this, right? Yeah. 
So there's a straw for water that comes out of the handlebars so he doesn't have to go like this. Because it's all about milliseconds for Cody, you know? He wants to save that extra. <laughs> he just wants to go like this to drink water. You'd have to Bro, that's the most the... bitch thing ever. There's so many, like... <laughs> there's so many bitch things about this sport. There, and, and you know what's funny? The biggest discrepancy between how I felt in this moment and how I looked. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, I felt, like, so dope in this moment. Oh, yeah. I was like, yo, take some footage. I'm, like, riding with my friend. We're cruising. <laughs> We're going, like, 20 miles an hour. I'm like, bust out your phone. Like, vlog this, right? And I'm, like, fucking just, yeah. He starts filming. I'm, like, what's up? We're here in Malibu. I felt dope. Yeah. And then I get back. I'm, like, yo, send me those videos. <laughs> for sure. And he hits my phone, and I was, like, yo, delete, delete those. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I look horrible. Yeah, I can't I, believe I put on this outfit and like walked outside. <laughs> and the socks. the socks. I mean, there's so Look many things. Line. Yeah, those what are, are doing? sweet, dude. There's so many things you could really go into about this. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Um, well, those socks are ridiculous to start. But I don't they even know what. They were on sale. They were the only ones that store. Okay, had. they were on sale. Okay, that makes it okay then. <laughs> so the actual triathletes, the actual Ironmen, they don't even wear socks because they don't want to waste time putting them on in the transition area, which is ridiculous too, you know? Damn. Just put, fucking put some socks on. <laughs> you got to ride the bike for seven hours. What's the difference? Are you going to sit in the penalty on. box with no socks on? <laughs> yeah. You're a grown man. <laughs> There's so many things, man, that I'm just like, I'm still second guessing it. Like, I'm still continuing training. I swam the other day. I've been, you know... I am preparing for an Ironman, but I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, I was a big fan of combat sports, and I was maybe planning on getting in one of these boxing matches or something, but because of the complications with my eye, the accident and everything, I had to force myself to get healthier hobbies that I can actually do, yeah. and they don't require getting hit in the face sometimes. So, yeah, I'm in this now, unfortunately. I think that's, I mean, that's how I felt, too, at the start. Of this, like, am I like this? The entire meme on this channel is how much I don't like biking and how much work it is, and like, yeah. how expensive it is, how much you have to fiddle around with like little bolts. And like, like, I had to like install that water bottle with the straw. <laughs> I had to buy a new straw. That's a new straw that I got from Amazon to install in that water oh, bottle. Oh, so that didn't even come on the bike. You were like, I want one of those straws coming mod. out of my handlebars. <laughs> I mean, it came, <laughs> it came on the bike, but I bought the bike used. So like the old d owner had been using that straw. And he took his Ooh. straw. Oh, so, so I had to buy a new uh, straw. Yeah, 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 yeah. All his teeth marks on it. And yeah, stuff. and I had to get like my power meter working. I had to change the batteries and that thing. It's a whole fucking thing. But then I'm out on this ride and I'm like, this is pretty cool. I just biked like 50 miles to Malibu and back. And I was like not in a car. I was like part of the yeah. scenery, you know? Yeah, yeah that is a cool, cool feeling. It's cool the amount of ground you could cover on a bike. But then I, I see these photos and I'm like, I'm retiring. Yeah, honestly, that's the only thing I was scared of of getting into this. Like swimming's cool, putting on a wetsuit looks cool, you know? Yeah. Like fucking Zach Efron throwing it on, doing Iron Man, whatever. Did, did he? Does he wear wetsuits? I feel something? like I've seen him do something <laughs> like that. I don't know, maybe just Baywatch the movie, like yeah, when it, you know, when yeah, he was maybe, jacked yeah. for that. I'm thinking, like, you know, that's cool. Running, I do all the time. Running's cool. You can wear whatever. Wear a cool Nike outfit. But, um, yeah, cycling's just the one thing that I was like, fuck, I don't want to get into this. But I like it. It's fun. You get to see so much cool shit yeah. when you ride around. And especially here, you go down to the beach and ride in the bike path. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's so nice. People don't get it, though. They probably... It's nice that I get to come here and do a podcast about it because I have to avoid talking about it on... My That's what this is for, you know? And nobody watches it. <laughs> Perfect. Nobody gives a fuck, but this, this is just, is just for, for us yeah. to just, like, talk about it, you know? Yeah. It's nice, man. I'm lucky my parents do it, too, because my dad also has been coaching me. Yeah. That's and, really nice. And that's great, because he's, like, so he's done, like, a million. So is my mom. So, like, they're super knowledgeable about just, like, the little stupid things about the bike. And um, so that's nice. And when I go home, I can train with them. And yeah. you said your dad was a, a, your track coach, right? You've been running forever. Uh, yeah, I, t I, t I took some time off, you know. But yeah, um, yeah. So my father, he started running probably when he was about thirty-five. So he didn't really know what the fuck he was doing, but he would pretty much. You know what? What? I just realized something. What? My dad, yeah, he was my track coach, but. He would just steal other people's shit and give me their shit. <laughs> so that's why I was looking at that before. And I'm like, you know what? That's because that's what coaching is. You're just taking other people's stuff 
and regurgitating it to your people like I know this. I made this up. Your coach didn't make up the shit he's given you. He's just given you shit that other coaches gave him. So it's all that's just good, white good. labeling coaching plans. That's why you were saying that like it was fucked up. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think it's that fucked up. But I understand both sides of it. So my dad, he was one of those drop ship and train coaches, whatever, <laughs> it's stealing just, plans. It's different, but it's different when you're like a high school <laughs> coach. I wasn't even high school. I was like yeah, junior totally high. Different. I was maybe like 12 years old or something when he coached me. Yeah. So, yeah, it was real simple stuff. He, he didn't really have to know much at that time. It wasn't like I was trying to shave off seconds like you are now with those straw and all that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so he was my coach, and, you know, we're able to run, and my brother runs a lot. We're able to bond. It's nice. You spend some quality time with your family. It's cool, man. I like it. I like stuff like that. I got my brother on Strava, so we give each other kudos and nice. stuff like that. My dad cycles now because he's too old to run, so we got to cycle together. I did one 56-mile ride just to see if I could do that amount on the bike before I got into the race. Um, so that was nice. I got to do that with him. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. It's cool your family's in it. You told me a nice story about your dad, how he won. Um, he broke the world record. Yeah. Yeah. That was a cool story. In my head, when you're telling me that, it was like such a nice story. But the way I am with like my friends and stuff, I like the way I would I was gonna say, like, yeah, cool story, bro. Like just <laughs> to fucking it was a really cool, like touching story. But I didn't know if we were because I'm still trying to get you to forgive me for like all the, the you know, our first situation together where I, I Oh, I think I I think it's you're forgiven. But that was our first run together, you know, so I was like, I don't want to be too harsh on him like yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah, like, cool story, yeah. bro. But it was a nice story. Have you ever told it? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, it's not that great. Yeah, I guess, I think I've told it before, just like, what what did I tell you? What was the story? You, so, I, I don't know if you guys have heard yeah, it here. I've, I've, I mean, I've heard it. So, yeah. he, his dad built this bike, yeah. and he rode it for 24 hours. I forget the name of the bike. It was, the bike's name was Critical Power. Critical power. I had okay. a skull as the logo. That's why I have yeah. this. Yeah, and a twenty right foot straw. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he did have a catheter in, so that's <laughs> that's did some he? sort of straw. Yeah. Wait, it, actually, it wasn't. Oh, so he wasn't he fucking around. He didn't stop. Like he couldn't get off the bike to even piss. He did for one time or twice to shit. Wow. In twenty four wow. hours, but like to piss, he just pissed in the straw, and there was a and then there was a straw that came from the piss jug to the mouth. Did they ever mix those up? Yeah, he would drink his own piss. Great. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> so Cody's telling me the story. You know, his dad broke the world record, and he got in the Guinness Book of World Records. Right. And every year for Christmas, they would get the book. Yeah. And one year it came, and his dad, his dad was on the cover. No. Was, <laughs> 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 Next to the like, guy with a long finger. I was telling him this story at the office the other day, and I was like, in one year there was a full color picture of my dad standing there. Yeah. And then I Googled it. And there was a picture of him, but it, he was in the bike, so like yeah. you can't even see his face. But it's just a picture of the bike in the shell. Oh, okay, so, so it's like your childhood mind kind of exaggerated a little bit. Yeah, I was conflating two different things because he was also in a magazine too. Yeah, you know, remember Popular Science? Remember that magazine? No. Okay, <laughs> weren't into science or anything. <laughs> no, maybe we didn't have it over there in Staten Island. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> think... <laughs> but yeah, so he tells me this story, and he's like, "So you know." I, that Christmas that year, I was maybe like nine years old, and I got this book, and my dad was in it, and it was really cool. And that's when I was going to say, like, oh, cool story, bro. But, you know, instead I, I just told him, I was like, my dad was a bus driver. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, oh, did he win any records for driving buses? <laughs> so he got me right back quick, yeah. you know? And I was like, damn, in my head, I was like, I should have just fucking told him, like, yeah, cool story, bro. Yeah. You, you didn't know? even get him, but then he got you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, I, I thought we were having, like, a nice moment there, and you were, like, just hyper-analyzing it. Wow. <laughs> no, I was just thinking about, like, maybe jabbing at you a little bit. Yeah, I, I yeah, guess yeah. I was hyper-analyzing it. Whatever. You thought you, know? you were having a nice moment, and then you were like, did he win any world records for driving a bus? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, he was, he, your dad wasn't a bus driver. He he drove trains. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. He, Choo-choo. He was a yeah, train cool. conductor, I guess. Yeah. What's his name? Locomotive. Dennis. Dennis Trains? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, what the fuck? There's man? a collab. All the coincidences. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. But I, I will say we are we are we are cool now. Yeah, 
But at the, the the run that we did was the first time we like actually hung out, like you know, longer than five seconds since the Jake. Yeah, Paul like thing. we said hello in passing, but in LA that means nothing. You like, know, one, like we saw each other at hello. Coachella one time. Yeah, but you know what I and mean. And you're like, with Logan Paul, and I was like, oh man, he's part of that crew now. Like, yeah, I like know. I don't think you know. Well, what do you want me to do, bro? I got to work with what I got. No, no, I'm know? saying not not because I disapproved of that. I was just like, I don't think we're we're just like in totally separate circles now. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe it was meant to be, you know, maybe this whole thing, you know, you getting into this stuff, you know, it was all meant to be. It worked out. Look at this. Yeah, serendipitous. Yeah. Yeah, fuck Logan. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, not. <laughs> I don't want any fucking drama on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out of that crew, you know? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He knows, I, you know. On my last podcast, ever since I had he the... killed that coyote, that was the last straw. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting canceled for that now too. That's on my podcast. I know. And I'm like, yo, that story's I... gangster, bro. <laughs> I know. I watched that this morning. <laughs> and Ethan, I I respect Ethan's opinion on things, you know. So, for a little context, Logan Paul, his dog got killed by a coyote, and he went out and hunted down that coyote and shot it with a crossbow and. You know, this coyote killed his dog, and he found his little dog's head that he loved, you know? Ooh. Now, he was saving this story to tell on Joe Rogan. So he comes onto my show, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool that you save stories. And he's like, oh, I don't really give a shit. I'll tell that story here. So I'm like, oh, sick, you know? And my dog had just passed away, as you know. You know, it's in the notes here. Yeah. So we can we get it. We'll get to that. We'll save it more of it later. <laughs> I thought but, we'd close on an upper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I was a little like, you know, I I was bummed out and I was like, you know, I would do anything to bring my dog back. Yeah. So him telling that story, I was like, you know, this is gangster. You know, like I like that he went out and he did that. He yeah. loved his dog so much that he got revenge for the dog. He went out and, and got that coyote. And after hearing Ethan break it down, like, yeah, it could have just been a random different coyote that you shot, you know, but maybe that's where we don't align on that opinion specifically. Like I, I respect his opinion a lot, but. I don't know. I think it was kind of cool that he went out and got the. Co- if it was the same coyote, that's fucking dope, you know. Even that if coyote- it's even if it's not, no, but- I'm gonna tell myself it is. Yeah. No, no, no. But what, closure. What, yeah. what I think is like the coyote doesn't know that you have a relationship with your dog. Yeah. <laughs> He's a fucking animal. He's just like, oh, there's some prey. I'm gonna. It's your fault that you let the dog out. Uh, yeah, but 100%. I know I have yeah, a relationship yeah, with my dog. Like every time your dog shits inside, it's not his fault. Okay, it's your try- fault because agreed. you didn't let but him like, out. But like, you're not yeah. gonna be. So furious? No, no, I know. Okay, I, I, wait, can't really can, speak, can I, I can't really speak. I can't speak. Can I speak though? Can I at least like? <laughs> you have Logan Paul, two hundred twenty pounds, fucking jacked. You know, you want me to say that's your fault? You dog died. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in my podcast studio, you want me to be like? I don't even know why I'm weighing in on this at all. I don't like. I don't. So yeah, I mean, like, I, <laughs> I, I thought it was cool. I told them on the uh, in the podcast. I was like, yeah, that's dope that you went out and did that. And I watched Ethan Klein's video about it, and he's like, "Yeah, coyotes are these cute little dogs." And he show he Googled baby coyotes, <laughs> <laughs> and he put them on the you screen. Google baby anything, he would yeah, do that. and make that point. He puts them on the screen as I'm interviewing Logan and, and hearing the story, and I'm just smiling. I'm like, "Hell yeah, you shot him, fucking sick, man!" But like, you know, coyotes are vicious animals. If if you hear them murdering a dog. It sounds horrible. It sounds like a horror movie. You just hear the yeah. dog, yeah. and the fucking coyotes yeah. are just tearing them apart. Yeah. And they're in packs. They yeah. run in gangs. Yeah, you know they hunt together. It's great. They like coordinate their attacks. Yeah, yeah. they're fucking smart. Yeah. So like. <laughs> so yeah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Save the coyotes. You know, let's all fuck it. No, I get it. I get it. It was his bad. He left his dog in the backyard. I mean, I don't even. I really don't feel that strongly about this. I yeah, like same. This. I didn't. <laughs> it can't be your bat. Did he just he just left his dog in the backyard? That's not a bad thing. My dog goes to the backyard all the time. You're not really supposed to do it in in L. A. because there are coyotes fucking everywhere. Really? Mm. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I didn't really find that out until probably like a year and a half ago when someone that we I mean, we don't know her. Kelsey just follows her, but she posted a video of her dog because she did the same thing. It was a small dog. She let it out in the yard. Like, in the morning, she just opened her door. Dog went, dog went out in the yard, and she went in the kitchen to start making breakfast or whatever. And then the coyote, like, you can see it, like, planning, jumped out, attacked the dog, took it. And Never she was gonna like, let my dog so she was like, dog. she was like, yeah. this is, uh, I'm posting this as a warning. This happened to me. There's fucking coyotes all over L.A. Holy Especially shit. Especially if you live in the valley. Like, yeah. if you live more, you know, in a, like, residential open area, like, they're everywhere. Damn. Wow. We yeah. should ask her her opinion on what Logan did. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. She'd probably she'd probably be 
She'd be all for it. <laughs> she would be, right? Yeah. There she you go. That makes me feel better. Yeah. Back. You know, she'd be like, "Yo, that's gangster." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's gangster. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff FM, though, you're killing it. Thanks, dude. Podcast yeah. is killing it. Yeah. You um, I remember like you know when the whole when you did the whole documentary thing. Is that when you launched Jeff FM? It was, yeah. Because and you did the Patreon too at that time. I did the Patreon. That was more because all my videos were getting hit, age yeah, restricted, yeah. and I knew that this one when we dropped it, it was going to be gory and you know. Yeah. I was doing weight loss challenges, and those were getting age restricted. So I was like, "This for sure is going to be fucking." I'm going to get probably arrested for posting this. Um, but that was just those videos were getting age restricted because of something that I didn't realize that I was doing. I I looked into it, and it turns out that I was saying they said I was saying a slur in <laughs> all my videos, and I was like, "A slur? The fuck?" <laughs> it turns out one of the guys I was helping lose weight was Airsoft Fatty. And he wanted to be called Fatty, so I kept saying, like, Fatty, every time I talked to him. I was like, all right, let's go, Fatty, come on. Like, Oh, and the system was like, oh, that's... Oh, that's a slur. Yeah, but that's his name, that's how he copes, and that's what got my whole entire series age-restricted. So then I made the documentary, I was like, my channel's hot, I need to put this somewhere else. I put it on Patreon, turned out it was really successful, and I wanted to do the podcast, but I hadn't announced it yet, because I was still kind of I, I it was all a secret nobody knew that my eye was all fucked up and that affected cutting hair for me so i had to kind of take some time off of the barbershop which is my only thing that i was doing at the time it was my main thing and yeah then we just went we when i once i put the story out i was like all right now i can do whatever the fuck i want and then we started doing the podcast because you don't have to see hair and stuff like that so it was nice you know and you're still doing it on patreon too uh i put well i do live streams and vlogs oh, okay. and stuff like that so i'll still update people on the story because i have surgery next month or next week so mm. i'll make like a vlog around that but i'm not gonna post it on the main channel yeah, I mean, people yeah, are yeah. overhearing about it you know so you were telling me about how like the surgery is to like keep moving your eye forward because you yeah. see double yeah yeah so wow. it's like if you have two different like two cameras and one's back a little further and you try to match those shots Whoa. it's just off a little bit so if they could get that right that'd be great but you know, that's why I'm like a little anxious this week going into surgery because you never know what could happen with an eye surgery. So I'm trying to get as many miles in as possible before, you know, nothing's going to make a difference. I could still run with one <laughs> yeah, eye, yeah. you know, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So what do you, like, what, your podcast is your main thing? Or are you like working on, I no, mean, tell me no, you're no, working no. on products and... Yeah, this is always like such a tough question to a answer as like, you know what we do, you know, oh yeah, what are you doing? You know, what's, what's going on? What's next for you? You know, like, I don't know, fuck it, another YouTube video. Yeah. I know, what, I doing this <laughs> podcast now? what are you working on this year? Any cool projects? And I was like, you know, yeah, same shit. Yeah. What about you? What are you doing? Just the podcast? Is yeah. I mean, I'm doing a lot of shit, but I don't, I don't know how to like, yeah. Equate it to one or two things. Fair enough. That's a good question. Um, my main focus is the products and the barbershop. I am still doing, we're working on that but we're shooting it more like a season so i could get into it do 12 13 episodes and then just keep <clears throat> keep it moving but i want to do like as i get older i want to kind of switch up my content make it a little more mature and start doing shit that is more like impactful in people's lives that has like a positive impact because you know i could cut people's hair and bring in their arch enemies and have them, you know <laughs> fucking do that. I could set people up and do stupid pranks like that but I feel like at this point in my life after like what I've been through and you know moving forward I just want to do like documentaries and make like good pieces on putting myself through something really challenging and you know seeing seeing what happens along the way I was kind of feeling the same I mean I feel the same way about making videos it's like I don't even know how I used to just solely call someone out for like 10 to 15 minutes. I can't imagine doing that right now. Well, it's not even like part. I don't know. It's weird. It's like the only things I want to do are like, like positive. Maybe it's just getting older. I don't know. No, I don't want us to end up like that. We still need to roast people, you know, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I just meant like I used to like literally sit down and write a video for hours yeah. about one thing or person or how much one video sucked. Yeah. I can't imagine doing that now. I mean, Maybe I'll bring it up on the podcast. And, that's kind of you know, what I was thinking we could do with that um, 
the cheating in the half marathon. Those just implement. go in on them. You should do something on that. Put it on the coach. That's fine. Channel. I mean, yeah, if you're cheating in a marathon, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> Cody will not stand for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those. Um, I I didn't get to finish the story, but that became big news in the running community, like running Reddit pages and shit. So somebody came out and they were like, if you can do this time again, I'll give you $10,000. <laughs> and like, she put out all these responses doubling down saying like, yeah, I, like I did do it. Fuck all you guys. You don't know shit. No way. Yeah. Wow. Can you that's, try and find that? that well, that's what happens in that video later on in the video, but I don't, I mean, it's like a 10 minute video. So yeah, she doubled down and then, like she, they she, were all like, "Let's raise money, and if she can do this again, <laughs> we'll have this big chunk of money that could go to charity or whatever." And then obviously, you can't just bang out four minute miles like that, you know. Even wait, if you it train was for Johnny six Johnny months. Manziel's wife? wife. Also, there's a marathon investigation dog. I don't know who Johnny Man- who's Johnny Manziel. <laughs> he used really? to be crazy. NFL quarterback. 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 Yeah. yeah. Back he, in the day. No he was way. an NFL quarterback and was like not a big football fan. If you named the uh, Iron Man uh, <laughs> top finisher. <laughs> Lionel Sanders. Know. Yeah, I watch his YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, me too. He's <laughs> yeah. sick, right? Yeah, he's dope. He's got a like kind of like a like a fucking arrogant personality, you know. He's kind of like I a YouTube vlogger. Yeah, yeah. I like it. He just don't get that many views because he's in that niche yeah. genre. Yeah. But I'll be watching him and then my friends come in, like my crew and everything, they'll be like, "What are you watching?" And like I'm watching these videos that have 700 views on them. And your editor's like, no one gives a fuck about this shit. Yeah, nobody cares. It's like, <laughs> don't get into this because you're going to get another hobby and another thing that you're going to talk about on the podcast that people care about even less than UFC. Because it used to be like 10 minutes of every podcast was me just talking about UFC. And he's like, bro, people don't care about this. You know, I'm trying to bring fighters on the show. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, that's cool, but nobody really gives a fuck. And then now I go to this where it's like even less. Even interest. less people give a fuck about this. Yeah. But it is what it is. That's what life's about. When you get older, you know, we used to make these videos that at first were fun, making fun of people. And they're still fun. But when you have to do them on a deadline every week, you know, well, fuck, now I need a, a video for this week because that's how YouTube works. Who am I going to tear apart? You know, then it becomes like a job. Yeah. But when you're doing stuff because you, you're passionate about it, then, you know, I think that's that's when you make the best stuff. Yeah. And that's why Cody Trains is so good. That's why, you know, Jeff FM is so good. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I don't know where I was going with that, but... It is good. Uh, thank you. But I like you that know. you fuck around with, like, sound effects and, like, giving people, like, a live, like, backtrack and stuff like that. That's really funny. I might just straight up steal that. Do it. It's all stolen, <laughs> you know, but... Yeah, I, I have some of the barbershop spill over into that, like, the style that yeah. we did the barbershop. But, yeah... I, I would like to do stuff like this. I think that's just growing up. You do stuff that you want to do. And we're not as um, big as slaves to the algorithm anymore. I think that's what we're getting to now. Because back then it was like, this is our job. We want to make money so yeah, we could yeah. be, like, have security in our lives. Yeah, yeah. But now, like, fuck it. We made it. Let's do what we want now, you know? That's true, yeah. Deal yeah. with it. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the type of content you're getting. You want to, uh, that's cringe? Fuck that. You're getting this. <laughs> I'm riding a bike in this outfit for four hours, and I'm going to vlog it and talk about my thoughts. You're getting positivity. Yeah. It's true. I found this update. that's cringe? Fuck it. I'm going to go for a run instead. Yeah. <laughs> watch yeah. me make up. And, and we have that option You're now. you watch it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. Um, I found this little update here. So for her, uh, her 11-mile update was missing, and uh, basically her pace was at four-minute miles for the last 6.7 <laughs> miles. So then I found this. Um, she posted this on her story. She basically went back to like try to prove, but people were like, this doesn't align with the timeline of this doesn't prove anything. Yeah. You just went back to like the picture or whatever. So, um, and what did she say? Like, what do you know to the race organizers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if that resulted in a penalty box appearance, but probably should have. Oh, here we go. Dude, this is so funny. She called the accusation sad and pathetic. <laughs> uh, she called the accusation sad and pathetic. You guys are sad and pathetic. You running community. People that put your whole lives into this shit. <laughs> so what I fucking lied about my time, you know? Yes. She, Nobody gives a fuck about any of this. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's what a normal person would think, though, you know? Yeah. 
Okay, so this might have been a charity event too. She directed her <laughs> frustration. Was, yeah. She directed her frus- frustration at people questioning her time in a charity event and credited her athletic lifestyle for her ability to push through the race despite hating cardio. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, cardio sucks anyway. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great response. Great response. Cardio sucks anyway. Yeah. Well, so yeah. It, could this be a thing where her timing chip like fucked up? Or do you really think that she just mm. skipped the last uh, half of the race? Happen very often. She got this extremely just fast in the last seven miles as a runner. The only person think. you're <laughs> fucking over is yourself with that stuff. Yeah, that's right. You're only cheating yourself. Yeah. How would you feel if you had a friend that lied about their workout on Strava or something? Would you be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, we had like one of my friends, like he would, you know, post a lot of runs. Mm-hmm. And then we found out he was like, stopping his watch and like walking oh yeah and i felt like a little bit weird i've done that a couple times for sure yeah 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 but, but it's a little bit it's like yourself. when you see a run you just assume it's non-stop i've done it too you know what <laughs> yeah. <Fuck> it. <laughs> i did it this morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's okay that's fine but like it, like getting in a car and like leaving your shit on you know and like driving around <laughs> you know like let's just log this <laughs> I had this friend. Damn, it's you know, fucking wrong. I, I mean, should I say his name? Yeah, fuck it. I'll just wait. You ran down the four hundred five. You got to Westwood in five minutes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have this friend. Um, it's the same friend that, that I'm talking about all the time, Cody. Yeah. So he, he wasn't always a fitness guy. Very classy name. Yeah, yeah. Another coincidence. Weird, but um, he's very different than you. He spent half his life in prison. Mm. Did drugs his whole life. Up until now, he's sober for the past five years. And I picked him up from prison. He stayed in my house until he got on his feet. And um, he was living in my house for about six months. And then it was just too much because he was so institutionalized. And the way he was treating my employees and stuff, the way he was, like, talking to people. I think he yelled at one of my editors, like, yo, you got to brush your teeth, dog, or something. like. And I was like, yo, we're not, you know, I appreciate it, yeah, you know, yeah. telling him, like, about his <laughs> hygiene. But, you know, you got to fucking. So he's just a nut job. And like we took a little time apart and in that time he went his own way and started doing these long endurance training things and got into Ironman. So, um, Ironman, Ironman, the Ironmans, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> he got into these I weird, like I'm things. an Ironman. <laughs> so he, now he's faster than me and he, well, not really. Um, maybe he was back like a couple months ago, but now I caught back up, but he, he's a, he's a tough kid and he's inspiring. His story's inspiring. But before all this, back before he got arrested and did that four-year stretch, he wasn't as fit as as he was, as he is now. And we would go to the track, and I was the runner, you know. So I was running, and I was timing myself. I was trying to get a mile in under five minutes. And I was getting close to it, but I never did it. But Cody was just trying to break seven minutes. And I got five I think 16 or something, which is a pretty good time. And I was smoked after that. I wasn't going to try it again for a little bit. And he posted my time on his Instagram. And I had... What? Yeah. And I had... As his time? On his his Instagram. And I had to talk to him about it. Like as in like, like, hey, look at the time that I did. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he just posted it like uh, as like you know this this is fucking dope. You know, like let me let me post. Yeah, but he said it like insinuating that he did it. (laughs) He manzelled your time. Yeah, damn. yeah, exactly. So after that, you know, I'm not going to let that slide. So I was like, I saw it and I was like, yo, what's the deal with this? You know? And he's like, it's like, what? Well, you did it. I did it. I mean, no, he's he, he, <laughs> yeah. kind of a blur. I don't really remember. His whole thing was like, yo, who gives a fuck? And he starts getting hostile with me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just you, saying. You, dude, that's why you posted it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm just, I'm like, you know, like, you're only, I was trying to say, like, you're only cheating yourself, you know? It's like, not, like, don't fucking matter. It's just a fucking time, you know? I didn't take a picture of mine or whatever, you know? <laughs> like, we're getting into, I was like, whatever, bro. Just don't do that shit again, you know? Like, you're only cheating yourself. It's weird the lines that come out in this, you know, lifestyle. <laughs> it really is. He had a good one. Or no, actually, he got destroyed with one line that has been stuck in our heads for the past couple months since the race. Um, I told you the story. Yeah, that's a good great one and we're we're doing the race we're talking you know we're in zone two whatever where you could talk yeah yeah. (laughs) and he's we're just like fucking around fucking with people doing what we do staten island scumbags doing an iron man in palm springs you know loving life 
And this guy comes up behind us and he's like, yo, on your left. And we don't move because we're just like, who gives a fuck, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> this guy's like, on your left. And Cody's like, yo, chill the fuck out. You ain't a pro. Because we're in the back. Like, times don't really matter at that point. We're yeah. just trying to finish and finish for yourself, whatever. So he's like, you ain't a pro. And the kid goes, yeah, but you know what? I got my own goals. <laughs> He was so polite about it, but he he destroyed Man, my that's friend. That's the best way to own somebody. My big tough <laughs> friend, fucking covered in tattoos. He's like, "Yo, you ain't a fucking pro." He's like, "Yeah, I got my own goals." So and now Cody, like, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he was like, after that, it's he didn't totally. say sorry, but he loved that line, and that's all I heard for the rest of the race. And and then he and then he posted that guy's time. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna hate me for all these stories <laughs> that I fucking tell. But is he in, in LA? He'll be here in a couple of days. You wanna go okay. for a run with him? Yeah, sure. I'm down. Yeah, yeah. That'll be a funny <laughs> duo, you two, the two Cody's, yeah. but just polar opposites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've done a lot of drugs. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say yes or no, because I said that as a joke, but yeah, I, I kinda yeah. have. Okay. Jesus, my Whoa, that was loud, all those dude. calories. I yeah, know, I heard it. And my metabolism is finally kicking back up. Yeah, you're just your body's an incinerator. Everything you put in it just fucking. It kind of is true when you're training at this level. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. anything you eat. Yeah. I yeah. I was telling we had Chet Hanks on the podcast yesterday. I heard he's a big like nutrition guy. That's so you're I was not telling. Ask I was me like, where I heard. Yeah, where did you hear? Equinox. I saw him at Equinox. What? <laughs> yeah. You know him. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? What? You know him? What? So you just saw him, and you were like, yeah, yeah. he was like, yeah, I just got done with the team. Yeah, I, I bumped into. Well, oh, fuck, I don't know if I can tell this story. We can cut it. We can cut it, man. It doesn't even make me look good. At either. <laughs> you know, I, I want. I, okay, there's been two fuck ups on the barbershop show in my life. One of them is sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> a big mistake that I made that I regretted for a long time. Yeah. Now. I get how it looks, and I understand why I, w I got so much shit for that. I deserved it, you know. I I put him in danger. Sure. I brought, and especially seeing what's happened after with Jake, you know, he's gone on to he just beat up Anderson Silva. You yeah. know, he yeah. beat well, he beat him in a fight. You know, yeah. he won the fight, and I brought him in there, <laughs> thinking that we were gonna have like a. Like, it was just going to be like a roast, you know? Like, a, we were going to goof around, and it wasn't going to get violent and hostile, you know? <laughs> it didn't really get violent. It, it could have. It got close It definitely to. could Now, I didn't know he was going to come in, and immediately Cody's like, yo, bro, who gives a fuck? Like, he was going to shake his hand, and then Jake didn't shake his hand, and that's right off the bat I knew. I was like, yo, I was like, come in nicer, bro. Like, that, and, like, I fucked up the bit, which I would never do in any other circumstance, but that's when I realized, like, holy shit, what did I just do, you know? And you didn't really care afterwards, but it was everybody else that made you kind of be like, you know what, that was kind of fucked up. Like that, this was. And I, mean, I, know I knew you, it was, I knew it was part of the show. Like yeah. I knew like that's kind of what you what you did. I didn't know it was gonna be Jake, but I knew afterwards. I was like, oh, I mean, that's that's the show. It's kind of. I mean, it's not like you couldn't have predicted that he would have uh -huh. taken that as an opportunity to like confront me or whatever. Well, I appreciate that that you see that now, and I understand why your audience got so mad about that because they didn't see that and they saw me just set you up and put you in a dangerous environment but they don't know and i can't really explain this but i was prepared to die for you if he did fucking snap and try <laughs> to kill you i could have i would have got killed for you there i would have put myself Thanks, in the way you know but i can't say that on, on a video be like yo i'm sorry cody was never in danger because i would have fucking <laughs> <laughs> i just look like a douchebag you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but like i i would have but you know, I did. It did look bad what I did, and I do regret it. I didn't think Jake was going to come in and not be able to take a joke about it and double down and be like, "No, nah, fuck you! I'm going to make a cyberbullying campaign where anybody that makes fun of people is going down." Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It was a bad take. I didn't know it was going to happen. Um, but yeah, so that was a fuck up for me, and I, and I kept making videos afterwards because I felt bad about it. I never got canceled for anything up until that point, and I, yeah, I was like, I, I was very. Did I, you didn't really get canceled for that though, did you? Oh, bro, my comments after was all snake emojis for like I had like fifteen thousand comments on an Instagram and it was all just snake. What? Oof. I think I posted the one of all of us together. We took a picture after me, you, and Jay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was just <laughs> like, all snake just, emojis. Which is hilarious that we did that. Yeah. <laughs> that after all that, we were like, "Yo, but before you leave, Jake, let's get a quick one." Just like, 
Yeah, and people didn't know that we went for a run after, and like we were cool. No, before we did, wasn't it? It was after, I think. I'm pretty sure it was did after. We? Yeah, with we, a fresh haircut. Yeah, mm. we went yeah. after. Yeah, we did Runyon. Uh huh. Yeah. And at that time, you were like, "Yo, you're in too good a shape. This is annoying." You yeah. know, and that's how I feel when I look at your Strava and you're running <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then the other time was Chet Hanks. The other time was Chet Hanks. What happened? Barbershop that never came out, and he promised. He made me promise that I would never tell anyone. Oh. But uh, but fuck it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who gives a fuck, you know? So it'll be awkward next time you see him at Equinox. Whatever, I'll, there's plenty of Equinoxes. I have the Southern California membership. I can go to anyone in SoCal. I'll go oh, to nice. a different gym for this story. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so Chet was nice enough to come on the show because I we have a mutual friend, and you know how the show is. You know, Chet didn't know how the show is. He thought okay. it was just a regular interview show. Where we're going to do a podcast. We had the Airstream at the time where, you know, it was the end of the pandemic. We were going around yeah. two people. So we pulled the Airstream up in Venice. Turns out he had just got out of, uh, I don't know if it was treatment or something. or it, He was going through a tough time. And this is like a year ago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was going through a tough time. And I kind of lean into, you know, people's, he's going to have stomach, bro. No. Wow. Um, Whatever, I'll make the story short because your stomach sounds like it needs to go. And also, I don't know how much I can give away. So I had these new actors come in and they were fans of the show. So they they thought like everything I do, you know, people are, they know is going to happen and they're about it. You know, like they're they're walking into this willingly. You know, I'm going to have some horrible shit happen to me on this show. I try to kind of ride that line to where it's not going to make people that uncomfortable or like actually hurt their career or hurt or make them feel bad. You know, I don't want to make anybody really upset and have them like cry or anything like that. Chet didn't cry. He just got extremely mad and flipped the fuck out. These kids came in really funny, but they just went too far in this situation. I told them just do whatever, you know, I was like after the accident, I was just getting back into it. I was like, fuck it. It's fucking whatever chat. Chet wanted to shoot at like 10 AM and it was way too early for us to really be like in the zone. He, this kid comes in and he was freestyle rapping about Chet's relationship with his father. And it was just like, I was like, yo, fucking, you got to cut this, bro. And they didn't, they thought I was like doing a, like the character, like saying, Aww. yo, you got to stop this. So they just kept going and going and Chet snapped. He was like, you're ready to fucking kill these kids. And I didn't know them because I never worked with them before. So, you know, this is my show. It seems like, you know, I know all these things and I just play that character. Like, I don't know. You know, I, I can't control what other people do, but at the end of the day, it is my shit. So yeah, I fucked up with Chet too. So, you know, I had, I have two relationships I need to mend here <laughs> <laughs> and both of you guys live in Venice. So it's perfect. I'll stop by after this and I'll go, you know, <laughs> do his podcast. Yeah. <laughs> He's no, got one coming out. I yeah. know. I know. I know. So wait, you saw yeah. him at e Equinox so I saw he said, he told you that he went on TMG? No, I saw his, um, friend josh oh you know yeah, josh yeah. he said he nice was guy. yeah they do the show together so he was the one who told me yeah but i thought you'd be shocked that i knew that they came on your show yesterday or whatever i mean i thought that ago. i don't know someone i don't know i was a little yeah. shocked well there you but go anyways that's i told story. i told chet that i eat ice cream every day and he was like that's like the worst thing <laughs> that you could possibly eat <laughs> oh yeah for your body you for yeah and i was like yeah but i'm burning like two thousand calories a day you, We're you working out, and he was like, want. no, it doesn't matter. You got to eat your macros. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. This was like the opening conversation, too. Yeah, jumped, dude, right like, jumped right into it. Literally, jumped right into it. Oh, First yeah? 10, 15 minutes were so fucking intense. <laughs> yeah. Intense, because he's like on his Hank's Fit shit. And then like the rest of it was hilarious, because he like kind of like loosened up and... Like at one point, Noel just goes, "Are you ticklish?" And like, <laughs> and he was like, "What?" And like totally taken aback. And after that, it got like super loose and fun. And then he ended it by doing the most insane Trump impression I've ever seen. Oh yeah. Oh, the kid's got talent. He really does. Yeah. yeah. He's he's a fucking good actor. Stare got a good got, Joker too. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. did that too. So yeah, it was it was wild. Um, but yeah, my stomach's fucked up, so I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about so. the dog? Yeah. Why don't we wrap it up oh, yeah, let's by wrap up. talking about Nerf? <laughs> Um, yeah, R.I.P. Nerf, love him, he was a good boy, and, you know, I miss him, it was nice, we got to spread his ashes all over Riverside, California, out of the hot air balloon, it was actually nice, yeah, it was a nice cool. thing. And then you skydived out of it? We did skydive out 
not into the ashes. We let it like blow away a little Good. bit. Yeah. But it was nice. It was sunrise. There was like a beam coming down, and the ashes looked like he went right into heaven. And then, you know, I was like sad, but also like scared, and then happy. And then like we landed, and I didn't die. And I was like, okay, you know, this is nice. It was a lot of emotions mixed in one moment. It was a nice moment. If any of your, your uh, dogs pass away, I suggest you go dump the ashes out of a hot air balloon and jump out after. It's a nice closure, and I got to send him off in a nice way. That sounds like a nice way Amazing. to memorialize Amazing. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. 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 But you got to get certified in <laughs> skydiving. You got to do 30 jumps so you get your license. <laughs> and then you got to find a sketchy hot air balloon pilot that'll let you do that and pay him off. And I might just do the ashes part and not the jump out of yeah. the That's even scarier. It's not the same, man. It's I think I'd same. kill you a coyote with a crossbow. Your, your dog would be I think your dog would be upset with you if you didn't if you didn't do the whole thing. I think your dog would be like, oh damn. Really yeah. looking down. Wait, like, I spent how many years? Jump? I spent <laughs> how many years loyal to this pussy? He didn't jump. You won't even get his skydive certificate? Do the right thing. <laughs> get certified. All right. Thanks for coming on, dude. All right, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Jeff FM. Check it out. Thank you.